your Sunday morning with us. A few housekeeping things before we begin our service. We do offer communion each week, each week by intinction. That means that during that time, you can come forward, take a piece of bread, and dip it in the cup. If you prefer to be served an individual serving, if you stay in your seat, a deacon will come and give that to you. And if you need a gluten-free option, you can go out into the narthex. We do have those out there as well. And, of course, if you're joining us online, you can partake in communion with whatever you have in home at home and join us in that. If you have a prayer request, there are yellow cards in the pews. Um, you can write your prayer request on those, and you can leave those in the offering plate, which is right by the main doors over there. Um, that is obviously also where you can leave your offerings. And if you're joining us online, you can le- write your prayer request in the feed of this um, broadcast, and we write those down for you so that we make sure that we are praying for those who are at home as well. Um, next Sunday is the first Sunday of Advent, so after church we'll be transforming the sanctuary as we do each year. So if you'd like to stay and help decorate, um, many hands will make light work, and it's always a lot of fun to see how this space transforms in a short amount of time. So please consider staying for a little bit after church today.
machine and never lost him. And the young man, young man, was in Buick Canada, age 20, like this. I'd like to invite the children up now. Don't mean to wake you or anything, but uh, this is the part of the. You got anything nice? Why? No, nope, just kidding. Sit down. You're being silly. Go ahead. You can sit down. We're gonna do the children's sermon and then do the second reading. Okay. Yeah, but not right now. You can sit down for now. Okay, so we have a special treat for you in that Eli is going to talk to you about something very special. You're looking at the bag because you guys just want stuff, huh? You don't get to look in the bag. Na, 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 na. Ooh, ooh, go away. Do you guys do you guys know what starts next Sunday? What's that? Good job. Well done. Okay, now the tougher question. What is Advent? It's okay. I bet most of the adults in the room couldn't tell me either. She said, I think it's maybe when you count down towards Christmas... You're on the right track. There's something a little more underneath of the idea of counting down. Why are we counting down? Because we are, right, we're Christians. There's a W word I'm thinking of. What's up, Donna? That's a good W word. Worship's a good W word. But we're counting down. Usually you're counting down because you're, I went to the pharmacy this week. You're counting down your birthday because you can't. And I got shots in my arm. Yes. There we go. Wow, that was really painful. Guys. Okay. You got eye drops in your eyes, yeah. It's not a lot of fun, is it? Advent. Getting shots in your arm. We count. You like getting shots in your arm? We do things during Advent to really. There you go. Not be well. One of the things that you can get when you get a shot in the arm. Is a sticker. Kind of. But what's the big thing we're waiting for at Christmas? What does the sticker usually say? Your oh. mouth is full. Yeah. See, what's the big thing we're waiting for? What you know happens what? at Christmas? Yeah, we celebrate Jesus' birthday. That's a big birthday to count down to, right? Say what? Okay, well, that's a conversation for a different time. Um, yeah. Yeah? But it's a huge birthday. It's when Jesus was born, oh, okay. right? And so we count and we wait, and that's You are brave, yeah. So well, past John, I'm, you've, been, way, you've not been brave so much as it is you've been very faithful. Like. And so do you like those stickers? Yeah. I love it. So I'm going to give you at the same moment. stickers, but you have to promise me something. Can you think of somebody you at your school... Sunday. Or somebody you know first Sunday of Advent that where we you would maybe like to invite to church and waiting for the birth yeah. of Jesus to come. So we have these for you guys. Okay. Do you know somebody in your family? Yes. Who maybe need or somebody that you okay. know and so who there, needs to know that who needs to know that, that God you know. loves them. There's, it's a, we'll get them Can you think of anybody? And then there's even you can't some. think of anybody. You think you could see somebody maybe this this week or the next couple of weeks that you think, man, that person really needs to know that Jesus loves them. You'll get those later. But we you have what something you could else do for you. Is today. you could give them a sticker, because yeah. the sticker says, "Joy to the world, this let Earth receive so, her you know, King." In the hallway on the way into church. Now, when Isaiah was talking about the coming of the one who would be like David, it talked about a time 
when well, people would be loving and caring with each other, and he used the example of animals as a, a, as a representation of what that means. So what I want you to do, and there's well, some, there's some for the bigger children in the crystal, back if you want some but to hand not. out. Um, and there's some for the adults to hand out waiting. if you all want to. Maybe we could put something else on there. But what I have for the adults is something a little bit different. A little while ago, we talked about having these little cards. And they're cards that say, you are welcome and wanted. And sometimes when you're out and about and you see somebody... And they talk about how struggles they're having and maybe they'd like to find a church to go to. And you think, gosh, I wish I could invite them to my church. Well, I call it a person. Well, now you can. I don't know. There is a packet. There is a packet of three for everybody. And I'm going to challenge you. That's why I called it a person. To hand out at least one in the next couple of weeks. Not necessarily to give people to invite, you know, that they might. Go ahead. You can color it yes, what you want. But color it up and maybe add a picture or a word on there that's something that Yeah, that's right. So you can hand these out too. And there's one for the adults. Everybody needs to take one. Because this is an advent challenge. Go to you guys. Just So we have something to think about. It's an advent challenge to continue. Yeah. And all of us grown-ups are walking to think about ways that we can invite people to our church, to, to well. okay. find the love of Jesus wherever they go. So remember, the only way somebody may hear about God's love is from you. So you can tell it that Jesus loves you, that Jesus loves them, that Jesus loves the world. And you can share that good news with everybody. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord for coming to bring peace to our heart. Thank you, Lord, for being our hope in the world. Thank you for letting us invite other people to know you too. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, thank you. All right. This is actually a gingerbread Scots man wearing a kilt. So whatever you want it to be, it can be. You can read the second reading now. Yeah, I, uh, for 20 years I read swine fiction, and I still can't convince me. Do you want to do the scripture reading or do you want me to? Oh, yeah, sorry. Okay. All right. This one the second scripture this time in June. And it was this Okay, this one, yes. Oh, okay. I'm so excited about these these invitation cards because I can remember being in a situation where um, a friend of mine, and this is a true story, a friend of mine um, from uh, and I at church were um, in a store and we were buying supplies for um, Sunday school and we happened to have a conversation with the, the person that was a cashier. And it turned out that this person was new to the area, hadn't been to a church, was kind of looking for a church, and the two of us just stared at one another and we went, well, you can come to our church, but we had nothing that had our address or our website or anything on it. And so this is a way that you can give a person, and it, to me, it's like spreading seeds. You know, you never know where the Lord is going to plant and where the Lord is going to bless something. You may never hear from that person again, but you may not know that that person will go out and share God's love as well. So anyway, that's my take on it. All right, this is the second scripture reading. This is from the book of Mark, beginning with chapter 13, uh, verse 24. In those days, right after this time of suffering, the sun will become dark and the moon will no longer shine. The stars will fall and the powers in the sky will be shaken. 
Then the Son of Man will be seen coming in the clouds with great power and glory. He will send his angels to gather his chosen ones from all over the earth. Learn a lesson from a fig tree. When its branches sprout and start putting out leaves, you know summer is near. So when you see all these things happening, you will know that the time has almost come. You can be sure that some of the people of this generation will still be alive when it all happens. The sky and the earth will not last forever, but my words will. No one ever knows the day or the time. The angels in heaven don't know, and the Son himself doesn't know. Only the Father knows. So watch out and be ready. You don't know when the time will come. It is like what happens when a man goes away for a while and places his servants in charge of everything. He tells each of them what to do, and he orders the guard to keep alert. So be alert. You don't know when the master of the house will come back. It could be in the evening or at midnight or before dawn or in the morning. But if he comes suddenly, don't let him find you asleep. I tell everyone just what I have told you. Be alert. Bless this reading. This is the first Sunday of Advent. It is a Sunday of hope. The prophet Isaiah declared the coming of the Lord, which gives the people of Israel hope for the future. We wait with hope for the future because we know what the future holds, a savior. We light the candle of hope. How do I? Please join us in singing the first well, verse of One Candle is Lit. My Thanksgiving was kind of like the uh, Alice's One, Restaurant two. song. <laughs> for you. All right. So, we still have a few days until December.
fun. And, and we went, and we went with our son, and we had a nice time. And it came to the coffee hour. Nobody spoke to us. Nobody. There were 500 people there easily. And they had a really nice time talking to each other. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. We had little badges on. Well, Happy New Year, everybody. Dinner. It's the new year. Nobody talks. It's the liturgical year. It's the beginning of the new season. It's the we beginning are a friendly of our here. celebration. It's the beginning of the beginning. We need to continue How about that? that practice. Well, it is the first Sunday of Advent. Every place around us looks like Christmas. You get older. The houses are decorated inside and out. Name with a J. Even our sanctuary you know, looks like very John festive Joe, and appropriately decorated Jeremiah, for Christmas. Did, did, uh, you know. so but it's my job to remind you that it's not Christmas. I feel a little Grinch-like when I say that. It is Advent, a time of preparation awaiting the coming of Christ. For that reason, every year the gospel reading that begins the season is one that talks about what we call the second Advent. Not the birth of a baby, but the return of the Son of Man at the end of time. Advent reminds us that we're not waiting for a baby to be born. We're waiting for the fulfillment of the promise of God to redeem the whole world. Isaiah tells us that we wait in hope for the world. The Spirit of the Lord will be upon the one, Isaiah says. That was the text of Jesus' first sermon in his hometown. The beginning of his ministry that sets the stage for what his whole ministry would be. When they sat and began to listen to that sermon, they thought, oh good, he's going to talk about the Messiah. And then Jesus says, this reading has been fulfilled in your hearing. And they all got really, really mad. Because it was supposed to be about a future time. Not about now. It was supposed to be about the far by and by because we still had plenty of time and it's their people's fault and responsibility, not us, to make a difference. It's a sign of the Messiah and proof that Jesus is God's son. The Messiah is supposed to be God's ruler upon the land. The Messiah is supposed to be the one to whom will bring about the kingdom. But you see, as human beings, we think too small. When we think about the kingdom of God, we think about rising up a nation to lord it over all the other nations. When Jesus talks about the kingdom of God, he talks about the kingdom of people's hearts. The Messiah is supposed to be a better version of David. Because if you read the books of Kings and Chronicles, David's a bit of a scallywag. That's a good old word, isn't it? Scallywag. He's a bit of a rascal. He doesn't lead the way he's supposed to. Yes, he's a man after God's own heart, but he's just a man. Just a person. And he does some pretty awful things when he gets to be older. But the Messiah is to be a better version. Not a man with flaws. Not a man with feet of clay. But the son of man the Son of God, who will bring about the full fulfillment of God's kingdom and hope. That's why it's too big a job for a human being to do. It's too big a job for a human being to be the savior of the world, although many men have tried. Many men have tried to bring about the, the new Reich, the new kingdom, the new world order, the new life where our country is better than the rest of y'all. But that's not what the gospel is about. It's not about subjugating those who are less than us. It's about bringing up everyone so we're equal. It's not about deciding who's worthy or not. It's about making everybody worthy by the love of God in Jesus Christ. You see, the Spirit of the Lord is upon us. When we claim that we're followers of Jesus, then his spirit is with us and we choose to live a Christ-like life. Now, in case you think that means that you're supposed to be perfect, God knows that we can't do that. What I mean by that is to 
emulate the love of Christ, the forgiveness of Christ, the grace of Christ, the acceptance of Christ for all people. We choose to love others like Jesus loved us. Remember his commandment, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you. And how did Jesus love us? You know the answer to that. He died for us, and he rose again for us. So if you're going to love somebody, make sure you love them like that. That's not an easy thing to do, is it? But it is something we can strive toward. Our job is to be the children of God. We choose to be children of God. We're children of God just by virtue of being humans and created in the image of God. But we choose to be obedient and loving children. Because we all know that just because you have the heritage of somebody doesn't mean that you follow in their footsteps. It doesn't mean that you are like them because we all have a black sheep in our family and you may be that black sheep, I don't know. We all have people who are disobedient. We all have people in our families who don't follow the line. Maybe you're the perfect one in the family like Danielle was. She was telling me earlier how perfect she was in her family. (laughs) Except for one year, and we'll give you that. We'll give you that year. (laughs) But we can choose to be obedient, and we can choose to love one another as God's children. The Spirit of the Lord is the hope for the poor. Jesus' way is a way of radical love. You know, there's a lot of churches that talk about how to follow Jesus. There's a lot of people that talk about how to be a good Christian. There's a lot of churches that talk about what it means to be an authentic Christian. But they don't talk enough about love. I got accused once, I have told you this, by someone in my church who said, you talk about love too much. And I wanted to say, good. Are you getting the message? We need to hear it because all around us is messages of hate. All around of us is messages of separation. All of us is messages of what divides us and not what brings us together. Jesus is the way of radical love. Jesus' way is a way of radical grace, release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind. But you know the prison that encases us all is our own fear and our own hatred. That's the prison we need to be released from. You know the blindness that blinds all of us is the blindness of seeing Christ in the other person. Jesus is a way of grace and forgiveness. Creating the peaceable kingdom means taking natural ways and transforming them. This is not a story about children putting their hands into the place where snakes live. This, don't do that. Don't do that. It's about transforming the relationships between people. It's about realizing that we're all a part of the same family, that rich people and poor people, that old people and young people, that people of different colors and different cultures are all together, and we shouldn't be fighting each other, and we shouldn't be killing each other. We should be loving each other because that's what Jesus told us to do. Seeking this kind of world is what hope is all about. We are the hope for the world. That's what Mark tells us. The hope of the world today, the world is in darkness. All you got to do is watch the news. All you got to do, you don't even have to watch the news. You can feel the darkness around us. Watching the news can destroy the soul. I told you my wife and my son told me not to watch the news so much. But then you don't know what's going on. But then maybe you don't need to know all the time what's going on. Is it hopeful in the world? We're waiting for the world to be different. We want the world to be different. We hope that the world will be different. But hoping is not wishing. Hoping is believing that it's possible. Hope is believing that a better future is possible. The Son of Man will come in a vision of the future 
that will remind us that there is hope. It talks about the wrath of God, and I find that passage troublesome because I don't believe in the wrath of God. You can call me a heretic if you want to. I believe in the wrath of human beings that put that on God. Our choice is to make the world better, not so that those people will be destroyed in the end days, but so that we all might join hands and sing the songs of praise. Tells us the Son of Man will gather his faithful. No one is excluded from this trip. Because we all can be faithful. See, when you read that passage, it sounds like some are going to be faithful and some are not going to be faithful. And the Lord will decide who's justified and who's not. That's what makes me a bad Presbyterian. Because I don't believe in predestination, except that God predestined all of us to love one another and to love him. But see, when you have predestination, then you have some people that are left out. I don't believe the people are left out. You can call me a heretic again, because... That's okay. I believe that God calls us to love each other, and that's what God wants us to do, is to love each other, to gather the faithful in. Not everybody wants to go. I have this vision of heaven where people go up to heaven and somebody stands before God and says, I don't believe in you, and God says, that's okay. There's a group of people over here that appeal the same way. You can go over and stay with them until you want to come in. I think that you're a figment of my imagination. Okay, you can go over here with this group. That's how they feel over here, though. You can, when you figure it out, you can come on in. I don't feel worthy enough to be here. Okay, there's a group over here that kind of feel that way, too. When you feel like you want to come in, I love you. I think you should come in. I want you to come in. I got a place for you. I built a house for you. I want you to come in. But when you feel ready, you can come in. Not everybody wants to go. Not everybody wants to go on that trip because it's not an easy trip living in this world, is it? It's not an easy road. It's not easy to be faithful by ourselves. But who told you you had to do this by yourself? Anybody tell you that? Okay, are you listening to me? Are you there? Anybody tell you you had to be faithful by yourself? We got each other, don't we? We got God, don't we? We got Jesus, don't we? You don't have to do it by yourself. So be alert. I saw a poster that said, be alert. We need more alerts. I don't know what that means. No one knows when it's going to happen, so you got to pay attention. But don't pay attention to doomsayers that say it's going to happen. This has to happen, and this has to happen, and this has to happen, and this has to happen. Don't worry about that. Jesus says not even the Son of Man knows. So if the Son of Man doesn't know, then you can abet some preacher over here doesn't know. Live like the Lord that's already here. Because he is. Jesus rose from the dead. He's alive. Yeah, amen? He's alive. We don't have to wait for him to come. He's already here. We don't have to pay attention to the end times because you may wait for the end times and you may go to meet him before the end times come. It's all about being ready every single day. And so Jesus gives us a lesson of a fig tree. Unlike a fig tree, the time of Christ is always here. We like seasons, don't we? We like living in Michigan because we have seasons. Because if you live out west, they have like two seasons. They have summer and then fall for like a half an hour somewhere in October. I don't like that. I I like the season. I even am okay with the snow coming. I know. It shakes Joyce up when I say that. And it's good for us to celebrate a season like Advent because it's good for us to take the time to remember because we need seasons to remind us. We need events to remind us. We need birthdays and anniversaries and, and celebrations and times to remember and seasons like Advent and Lent and Epiphany, and Christmas, and and Easter. We need those things to remind us of the significance of the life of Christ. But we can remember that hope is all year long. 
So be the hope for the world. The world is a dark and hopeless place without Jesus. If Jesus is not born, then the candle is never lit. And if one candle can light the darkness, then one candle can light our way to joy. For me, Jesus is that candle. So as we look at the Christmas tree and as we look at the Advent wreath and we look at the lights on the buildings this December, may they remind us that Christ is the light of the world, that Christ is that hope in the midst of darkness. And that we live our life in the hope of his love and our hearts is the hope that this old world has. So remember to be present. Remember to be alert. Remember the hope of the world has come and his name is Jesus. So as we prepare to Come in prayer to God. We stand as we sing, Christians, all your Lord is coming. Number 136. Please stand if you're able. morning. Um, I have two prayer cards, and if there are any others, please bring them on up. (laughs) Please pray with me. I'm um, going to 
pray a prayer of hope uh, that is based on several scriptures that I found on guideposts.org. God of hope, thank you that in your great mercy you have given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. That we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand, in the hope of the glory of God, to such a degree that we can even glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not put us to shame, because your love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. Remind us often that everything that was written in the past was written to teach us, so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. Grant that we may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit and that we who put our hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. Amen. And Lord, we bring these requests to you. From Joyce, we have several uh, petitions for healing, and for your hand on these, these people. For Andrew Cox, who will be going through some dental surgery. For Kim, who is having chemo treatments. For Gary Wilson, who will be having kidney surgery on Tuesday. And Debbie Emery, who is having liver problems. We pray your healing touch on each of these, Lord. And we have a praise from Nicole, Josh, and the praise band, and everyone else who does music here. <laughs> um, we have a prayer of praise and thanks to Mary Walrath, who purchased an iPad for the soundboard so the sound can be mixed remotely from anywhere in the church. Thank you. That is such a great addition to our our soundboard and please hear the silent prayers that we now lift to you And please hear the prayer that your son taught us to pray together. Our creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And please join us in singing our communion hymn, My Soul Gives Glory to My God, number 130, and you can remain seated.
come around this table in hope, not wishing that it's all going to happen and be nice, but hope that is eternal and is particular in knowing that God's will will be done when we do it. So instead of spending all of our time in Advent buying presents, so how about if we time we spend some set aside some time to be present with one another as Christ is coming to be present with us? We can think of ways that we can be present with each other as Christ is present with us in the bread and in the wine. Think of ways that we can be the hope in the world by being the hope for the person sitting next to you. We remember that on the night when our Lord was betrayed, he took bread, he blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And at the conclusion of supper, he took a cup. And again, he gave thanks to God. And he said, take all of you and drink from this. For this is the blood of the new covenant that is shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you share it in memory of me. When we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim his death and celebrate his resurrection until we see him again. Oh Lord, we thank you every day for what you have done for us so that we can have hope every day. And we thank you for this beautiful season where we highlight this hope so that we can finish this year strong and head into the next, glorifying you. In your name we pray, amen.
I want to remind the children and all who would like to, we're having a quick kind of play rehearsal for Christmas Eve. If you're able to stay, we'll meet in the great room uh, after the service, after you've had a little time for some refreshments. And we'll, uh, and we'll go through some skits that I've written that we're going to be able to use for uh, Christmas Eve. So uh, we'd like to invite anyone who would like to join the church to transfer your membership, to rededicate your life to Christ, to come forward as we sing our final hymn. Our closing hymn is Everlasting God. Please stand if you are able. Thank, Thank you. you. I forgot that part. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Praise the Lord and the blessing of God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit go with you today, tomorrow, the next day, the next day, the next day, and every day. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 All right. Amen.